Hello and welcome to Making Mannequin Heads into Planters, episode something something. Next episode. Uh, how you doing? Hope you're doing well. Um, it's been an eventful um, time since the last episode that I filmed. Um, yeah, so trip to Europe was awesome and now we're back. And on the way back I got COVID, which was very exciting. Um, spent a couple of days completely asleep. Um, and I'm on the other side of it, and now Larry has COVID. Yay! Fun COVID! Not at all. So anyway, so, um, we're working our way through it, and, um, hold up at home. So I thought I'd do another, um, episode and work our way through this, um, <clears throat> beautiful White Walker-ish head. So today my plan is that I'm going to do more of the, uh, so the scales are done right scales are done well are they though i don't know that they are so i'm thinking what i'm going to do is i'm going to do some highlights in those scales just to make them actually look completely separate and to maybe get rid of some of the black line lines um, but i'm going to start bringing in gray with those but first i want to finish the line work on it in the purple and i'm going to do these lines down here first and that's what we're going to start with today so I've already got some of my purple out, and this is this um, satin multi-surface acrylic by Martha Stewart. And I'm going to pull some over from here. And I'm going to actually bring in oop, 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 some of my dark blue that I have. Oh, this is a very light, uh, or it all settled. And I'm gonna put that in a separate little pile. There we go, and that'll darken my purple somewhat. And then I've got black here, but I'm not going to use it in addition to these colors yet. Because once you start adding black, it's very difficult to come back. <laughs> um, because it changes the nature of the color. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's like there's always this debate. Is black an absence of color or is it all colors together? Well, white is, in my, view, in my view, white is the absence of color, and black is the combination of all colors, which is, I don't know who taught me that. Somebody taught me that a long time ago. Um, so the black that I'm going to be using is this Liquitex Acrylic Basics, and then um, I've got all my assorted other, the white is going to be, oh, actually I've got, I'm sorry, that, yeah, I'll be using that and the Winsor Newton that I have here. And then the white that I'm using is just the Blake Studio Acrylic. It's just the, the simple white. Uh, because this goes outside, so it's not needing to be anything more than that. We're going to start on the back so that I can learn as I go. I think I'm going to go directly with this purple. I'm going to go directly over the lines. Use them as my guides. And then what I, do, what I will do, this is going to show up somewhat on some areas and then not as much on other areas. And what I will do is I will come back, since I use the, the black sort of as my drawing basis, put more purple in there. There we go. Bring more purple over to the side. Mix that with the blue. And so I am actually gonna change this brush. I do like this firmer, little teeny, little teeny nubbins of an end. Uh, it tends to work better on this. I can put it down much more purposefully. Sharper lines, there we go. And these are all gonna be slightly different colored of blue. <clears throat> so right now we're staying in the blues um, barely touching into the purples, but it's really giving the, so purple and red, I mean, blue and red, you know, are opposite ends or opposite sides of the color wheel. Um, therefore what I'm doing is I'm trying to stay monochromatic with this guy. Cause when you look at the white Walker, the thing that makes it unearthly or, uh, creepy, <laughs> if you will, when you look at the makeup that they've done, they're not, there's no fleshiness to them. There's no like blood in them. 
in, as in there's no pink to them. Not a, only do the eyes turn blue, but in the icy guys, you know, ice is um, that got that bluish hue to it. And that's what they did with the makeup for these guys. And I really like sort of sticking with this theme on it. I don't mind taking, you know, a theme from a whatever that can be referenced and using it on my, my stuff. But so that's why I'm sticking to this, um, this using blues and purples. Keeps it all sort of monochromatic feeling. <clears throat> now, as I work my way around this, like I said, I've got different colors. And since I've got that nice undercoat, the very fundamental base coat on here, I'm going directly over the black lines, as I mentioned, that I did with my marker. I used a Sharpie. If you didn't see the episode, you might want to check it out. The last episode, um, I think, was the one where I did these lines coming down through and um, marked out and then or painted all of the scales with the first coat um, of the scales. There we go. And these are lines of where I, what's the purpose of these lines? I want to draw the eye through and down. I want to give it sort of this motion this sort of swirly feeling to it. I'm not quite as swirly as that, but I'm more of a, of a, where is your eye going? I wanna tell your eye where to go. So a lot of people, when they're painting, a lot of really good artists will tell you, and I'm not a really good artist, but I will tell you because I've heard from other artists who are actually really good artists who know what the hell they're talking about, um, that, uh, having sort of a wandering eye really draw is a drawback. So <clears throat> if your eye doesn't know where to go to, it's going to feel uncomfortable. Um, so that may actually be your goal, right? With your painting, um, that your eye wanders. So my large scale paintings, I want the eye to wander across the canvas. But I want to tell the, I want to give sort of a story-ish, if you will, while the eye is wandering. I want it to be able to easily slide. Uh, some paintings are very forceful. They make you look in one area. Somehow, you know, it's at the magic of art, right? And... Um, they, they, or some others draw your eye into an area. Uh, there's something called, that I've always been fascinated with is chiaroscuro. So it's that contrast of uh, bright and dark where it's like a hyper-focused um, method or style of painting of um, art that is one area will be really absolutely hyper focused really really brilliantly in focus and that's the the subject matter is incredibly brightly lit and um incredibly detailed super sharp you see like the whole scene is about this one interaction this this one area small area on the or large area on the canvas and um the rest of it literally fades um, into black. <laughs> it's really, I, I just think it's, it's fascinating. Uh, it's very effective to tell the, to like really brutalize the um, viewer into uh, seeing exactly what the painter wants you to see. So there's not multiple scenes going on normally. It's just one subject or one moment that's being depicted and um that is what you're supposed to look at and it's kind of neat because like in the shadows in the background it makes you really go "Ooh, what's going on you know what is back there and i know that it, i understand it's not as important as what's going on in the foreground uh and that's not necessarily in the foreground but um in the focused area but um it, it, I just think it's really cool. It's a very creepy, can be a very creepy 
uh, style. And um, I couldn't tell you historically when it came to, you know, when it was popular and all of that, or when it was developed or who did it, but I, I knew that a long time ago in my, I took this really cool um, art class, art appreciation class when I was living in Salzburg. That was really very good. It was actually extremely well done. And, um, you know, that was one of those things where to get through the test, you had to memorize all these things that, you know, dates and painters and other artists and eras and blah, 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 blah. And I, I did it for the test, but of course I wasn't an art major, I was a music major. Um, and I enjoyed the class a lot. Uh, it was very, very interesting to see how things developed. You know, it was sort of a survey class, so it wasn't like in depth on any one area, but it was kind of cool to see how they evolved and stuff. And I did well in the class because I have, or at least I used to have, very good short-term memory to be able to regurgitate things. That's my uh, ability. I think it's from having learned so much music and, you know, been able to immediately perform it <laughs> not really have it in my long-term memory. Um, I used to joke with a friend of mine, a singer, a female singer friend of mine, I would, and she was like, oh, have you sung this before? Because I can sight read music extremely like, freakishly well and quickly. And I'd be like, um, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't really remember music after I've sung it once. And if it's not true, I'll be like, oh, well, this seems familiar. But for me, a lot of times when I'm reading music, uh, I read it uh, every time I sing it. If I'm looking at the music, if it's not memorized, obviously. If I'm looking at the music, I'm looking at it differently each time. It's kind of one of those weird things about my brain. It's hard to explain. But um, she thought I was kidding. I'm like, well, no, actually, really, like, I, I'm not sure. I may have sung this before, but I'm basically just reading this for the first time, as if it's the first time. She's like, oh, well, that's weird. How do you not remember if you were saying something? I'm like, well, I may have sung it twice, and it was like 20 years ago. I'm not going to be able to tell you. I don't remember. My memory does not work in a way like other people's that I know. Um, whereas I, I will remember some situations when they're like, oh my god, situation. But otherwise, my memory um, is very situational. And uh, non-situational it is very um, in the moment kind of weird but it is what it is it's gotten me got me what I need to know it takes a while to get into my long term but once it's there it's pretty much permanent um, every once in a while I get a brain dump where it's like yeah and I don't remember any of that anymore <laughs> it's like well shoot I remember I remember knowing that or I remember remembering that at some point in my life but uh, I couldn't tell you what it was now. So, okay, so that's what I wanted to do with that. I like the uh, the, the black outlined, so I'm just, working, just playing with something here. Let's play with getting rid of these, just obfuscating the, the actual outline of this, and it kind of makes it much more subtle, which do I like that? No, because it's gonna be outside, I want it to be really obvious. So now we're gonna move into the next phase, which is what I was wanting to do uh, and good, I'm actually gonna do it. So now I'm gonna pull a bunch of black over to the side, and then I'm going to pull with a separate brush. I'm going to pull white into it. And why am I using a separate brush? Because I'm trying to keep the white white and not get it all smudgy with the black. And so I'm just wanting gray, obviously. That's why I'm putting white and black together. And so I'm sticking with this. Now, this is the first time I'm introducing anything other than <clears throat> the blue with a little bit of purple, right? So the purpley blue. This is going to be an experiment. I wanna wet this down, lighten it up. It's kind of thick and heavy right now. Get some water in there. Uh, maybe I can make it a little bit All right, more watercolory. It's a nice thing about acrylics, you add water to them when they're wet and 
thing almost you can almost move them like a watercolor um, or at least a very 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 light acrylic white oil you know you can you can really change the, the texture you're going with and how it applies so i'm going to again start in the back because most people will be looking at this from the front and i want to so i'm going to put the line back around there because i don't like that but i want i want to work on i was thinking highlights would be in the gray but i'm wondering if it's going to come out actually dark maybe the outlines should be in the gray let's see let's try that on this That would be weird. What do we do? Let me think there. I don't know. Let's try another one. Don't know about this. I don't think I'm going to use this brush because I want it to. I want something that will blend a little bit better around the edges. I do want something firm though. Oh yeah. So good. Let's try this little guy. Oh god. <laughs> wheel that so one thing about brushes is that the tips that's not a happy place to be that's called you go into trash and i find another one that's like you in my box box o brushes there we go this one should be cool um <clears throat> i'm gonna go with sort of wedge head can you see that yeah there you go See that? Oh, 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 focus. There it is. And, oh, this one would be nice. It looks good in the hand, at least. So let's see if, do, going over these outlines, if this is just overkill and kind of, why do I need to do this? I don't. Too much darkening. Yeah, that's too much dark. So, all right, I'm going to go the other direction. Well, let's turn this whole thing around. I'm going to give my glue. Finger full of paint. I'm gonna go with a lot more white and just a little bit of black. I have a little too of white back there that I don't like. There we go. Oh yeah, give me a lot of white. Go. That's almost empty. Uh, let's just make a little bit of light gray or a lot of bit of light gray. Going to switch all that together. So you'll, you'll notice that a little bit of gray goes, a little bit of um, the darker color goes a long way in the lighter color, or in this case, absence of color, in the white. I'm going to bring a little bit of the purple in just so that it's not such a stark contrast, because you'll notice it's still making gray, but it's making a warmer gray. Um, warmer gray, bring in reds or blues, softens the gray. A colder gray, only blues. And blacks. And when, since I'm bringing in the purple, that is going to warm it up. Because it's got red and blue, but it's going to give it actually some color instead of just a gray. There we go, it's almost like a dove gray. What used to be called dove gray when there were only 40 different grays instead of 9,000 different grays like there are today. So in the center, oh God, that's really heavy. I don't like that. Let's see if I can loosen that up. A little bit more like a wash. Oh my God, that's really, really light. Oh, I don't like that. No. Oh gosh. I kind of like that though. All right, it's going where I want it to go. That's for sure. Let's see. I just need to go really light in the purple and bring a little black into it. Let's see how that works. And that's what I need to do in the end. And I was going the wrong direction. Let's experiment with that, right? Real light and thin. And I'm doing it flat because I've got a whole bunch on the side. I know it looks a little weird. Oh, you can barely even see what I'm doing. There we go. All right, let's see how this works. Bring this guy over here. Do, do, do. That is very, very, very light. Oh my god. Well, that's spludgy. I don't like that. Oh, goodness gracious. I'm not happy with that at all. 
Maybe I'll just leave it so that it comes through like that. What else am I going to do? I've got the edge. I've got the highlighting the way I like it. Maybe I just don't mess with it, right? Just leave it alone. <coughs> that may be the way to go, because I don't like how these are going at all. Oh, well, that just came back a little bit nicer. Adding the blue back in makes it a little bit less muddy. There we go. Well, that's a little saving grace right there. It looks like horrible on the back. Good lord. Not, oh, there we go. Super muddy blue is what that just made. All right, let's salvage this one. And then we're going to move on to working on the face instead. Because this didn't work. No, I'm good with just moving on. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Um, my idea was not successful. And I, I learned from that. That was not going to work at all. Which I'm fine with. Do, do, do. But, glad I did it on the back, not right on the front, because that would have been tragic. And then I'll just go over them with a the marker afterward. But, for now, that's fine. Like I said, where's it going? Outside! That's right. That's right, baby. Alright, good. Get a little bit highlighted in the bottom. And we're going to move on. Alright, let's move around to the front. So now, what are we doing? We're doing highlights. Ooh. <laughs> As I put my fingers right on the back. Alright, so how are we going to do this, my friends? I want to do highlights from here on out, but like I just discovered, i got to be careful with my highlights. So... I am actually going to try this new blue that I just came up with. A little bit warmer, a little bit more white. And I'm going to put it on right next to the darker sections. And now, like I said, I don't care if it, the color changes along the way, right? Because the color underneath changes. So it actually makes more sense for it not to be consistent everywhere a little of that black in there and this is definitely much lighter color i'm going to dry my um brush though so i'm not going to put this try not to put this on too goopy i'm going to try to draw it through and bring it right around and think of it like i'm putting on makeup little bit of blendy blend blend so this is already nicely highlighted so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it on one edge of it of the darker parts try to get it so that it feels like higher points like physically higher points on the face if this doesn't work it doesn't work at least I'll have tried right so far, so good. Do, do, do. I mean, the plan was always when putting on the dark, right? My hands are shaky from being sick. But there we go. Oops. There we go. I guess that'll work. Do, do, do. Connect all these together. That's actually kind of cool. That actually works pretty well. There, that's good. You may not see much of a difference right now, but I bring them to you without getting paint all over my face, all over my hands. So just brings those lines to not just two colors happening. And therefore it gives it a little bit more of a, um, a blend in incorporation into everything else. And this is, the thinness of this paint is actually really good right now. And this is really the right brush. This wedge liner brush is really nice to work with. Paint is nice and light. I'm just going on the bottom sides 
of my um, <clears throat> lines that I have there. I blend it under the eye a little bit better than what it was. It's a very hard line before. There we go. And be careful not to overpaint my other lines too much. There we go. Do, do, do. You can also bring those lines out. Just It's going to be subtle enough on the other paint that you're not going to necessarily, unless you're right up to it, notice that the dark line will end here and my lighter line will end at the end there. All right. So, see how much I can get done in the next five minutes on this with you. And like I said, my hands are very shaky right now, though, from being sick the last few days. All right, that's good. I'm gonna bring this all the way up and around. Now I'm gonna work down the center. Keep myself working down the center. Work on the bridge of the nose, bring this in and out. There we go. I'm going to leave some of the under color because I like that under color. It's just going to be sharpening up what I've got there already. that eye. Just on the top. So the way that you wear it, that you use a wedge brush is, <clears throat> in my opinion, the most effective way that I've found is you Put it on so that the wedge is facing out and then you draw to the, to the shortest bristles. So I put it on and I draw to the shortest bristles. Um, so my, I stroke. For me, it's easier away. For you, it may be easier to come toward you. Um, I, go, I do definitely go both ways <laughs> with the brush, with the bristles, if you will. Um, whatever's more comfortable, obviously. And then what I want to do is I want to really thin this and I'm going to blend this in the eyes. Stay down the center again. Keep myself to my my, um, my focus along the bridge of the nose. Let's load up the brush a little bit more now. A little heavier. There we go. So I'm always using the flatter part of the the wedge, if you will. I do like wedge. You can get really good edging, sharp lines with that um, angled edge. I don't know if they call it a wedge. That's just what I call it. Um, brush, angled brush. And um, it's just, it's a nice feeling that you can draw very nice lines with it paint very nice lines, draw, paint very nice lines. Uh, there we go. Oh yeah, those are good. And I am loading up both sides of my brush because that's just how I prefer to work. You can experiment, you should experiment as to what you prefer. kind of cool is with this I'm finding that I can really clean up some of the heavy handedness that I had with that blue with after the marker um, so 
especially because of the nature of this brush. There we go. Do work on this side. Do the same thing. Isn't that great right there? It's a nice gray. All right, my friends. Well, I'm going to let you go. And um, I am going to see you all later because I am out of time for this session. Just a few more lines. I know I could go on forever, just painting, painting, painting. It's so much fun, so satisfying. Um, but I do put a time limit on these. And I know that I usually fail, but in this case, I'm going to stick to it. I do have this really great color that I'm working with right now. But now I know how to get to this color. So when I pick it up again with you guys, I will have no problems making this color again. Oop. Alrighty. So. Oh, this is cool. Very, very, very satisfying. Right. Right around, right in the temple. Nice, beautiful. Sharpness that will read very, very nicely, I think. Working very nicely. Right around the outside. And it seems to be blending into the other colors very, very well. Okay, so have a wonderful day. I will see you in the next episodes. Um, maybe I'll tell you a little bit more about our trip. It was spectacular. I do have some recommendations of where to go. Prague, I'm going to tell you right from the beginning. Prague, fabulous city. Um, Budapest really really cool city uh, very very intriguing uh, interesting time of year so these are my main takeaways interesting time of year to go uh, November um, after living through that through November's in that area um, it's interesting as a as a visitor to experience that because it's like how the hell do you pack <laughs> you know hey we came challenging uh many layers is what we found out we and it took us a little while um to figure out what kind of layers but uh we figured it out so that's good so that extra layer that another that um added color <coughs> gives it a much better texture makes it a little it softens it and then we'll go through with one more set of color and uh, that'll soften it even more and we'll be done. All right, my friends, have a wonderful day and uh, treat yourself well, treat everybody else well. Um, I know um, <clears throat> a lot of times doesn't feel like people are deserving of being nice to, but you know what, do it for yourself. Even if, you know, it's the kill them with kindness. Um, and I do believe it's it's hard to get to that place a lot of times most of the time <laughs> but it's worth doing and um it's a good challenge to undertake uh i fail at it a lot uh but i succeed at it a lot as well um, because i try so i encourage you to try and um, you can't succeed if you don't try and you can't fail if you don't try and that's kind of a bummer place to be so stay on the edge. I don't know what that means. <laughs> so have a wonderful day. Put more love out in the world. There's not enough love in the world. Thank you, Sir Elton John. And take a big breath in. Ooh, I needed that more than I realized. And now look at the world. I'm going to be doing that some more today. All right. Have a good one. Bye.